hey you guys, my uh, 2018 exam predictions are going to be coming out soon, but there's been so many changes in the exams recently that I thought I'd just make this video to talk to you about the changes, talk to you about what you can do, talk to you about what I can do to help you, and talk to you about how you're going to get through this. So we're going to talk about the exams, um, the style of exams, the practical exams, um, the, the maths content in the exams, because that's massively, massively changed, and then what you can do about all of this. So the government introduced this new um, set of exams because they wanted the exams to be harder. With um, the old exams, there were loads and loads of past papers around, which meant you could practice loads. Teachers got really, really good at predicting the style of questions, like working out what's going to come up, like what didn't come up last year, what came up every other year. So the grades were going higher, grade boundaries were going up and up and up and up and up. So the government have introduced this to make it harder to get those grades. And obviously with the introduction to the 9 to 1 scaling system as well, that just makes it a little bit more difficult. So quite a few things... Rim, what are you doing? Quite a few things have changed. Um, they've introduced multiple choice questions. Um, some of them had them already, but it's now kind of like across all of the examples. Um, multiple choice questions are a great way of picking up marks because even if you're not sure what the answer is, just, just write down or just fill in a box. And you have to really, really watch these because um, if you're putting two boxes, you're not going to get the marks. You only have to like just do what the question says. If it says pick one, pick one. If it says pick two, pick two. If you don't pick the right number, you're not going to get the marks. But these are not as easy as it seems because people that write exam questions are really good at working out what you think the answer is going to be. So there could be four answers up there that are very, very plausible answers, or there might be kind of like one word difference, or like a word that looks the same really, if you just scan over it quickly, that could be the answer, but it's not the actual answer. Or it might say, is it this and this, or this and that, or that and this? And you really have to read these carefully, because these can be quite tricky. Lots of new topics have been introduced, lots of um, social ethical topics, how science fits into society, so stuff like life cycle assessment in chemistry, there's lots of specifics about new pathogens and, uh, well not new pathogens, but new to the exam board pathogens, um, so we can expect questions about these. You see what she's doing behind me while I'm trying to make videos? Anyway, lots of topics have been moved around. For example, the I used to be in physics and it's now in biology. But the time before that, it was in biology, so it's moved from biology to physics and it's now back in biology again. Ouch! She's being really helpful today. Some topics have moved from triple science down into double science, and some things have moved from A level down into GCSE. And what the exam boards like to do is they like to test teachers. So stuff that's new, stuff that's moved, stuff that teachers aren't used to teaching, they might not have taught before, that sort of thing they like to examine because they want to see whether us as teachers are teaching it to you correctly. So anything that's new, new topics, anything that's moved, whether it's in one part of the course to another part of the course or come down or even gone up, those are really going to be topics that I think they're going to test you on. We now also have core practicals, which are going to make up 15% of your exam. So this isn't something you can just skip over the practicals, you have to know it. And it's going to be things like, um, look at this table, is this table, or this method correct, um, health and safety. So it's not just going to be like the science behind it, but the actual doing of the practicals as well. Now, if you've missed a lesson, this is going to be really hard, because if you've missed one of the required practicals, um, your teachers don't have time to go over stuff twice. They don't have time to do the practicals twice. So to help you with this, I have done as many as I can, doing loads and loads more all the time of the practical videos. Um, like teaming it up with sort of questions are gonna come up, team one six mark questions, mathy questions behind it. So that if you missed a video or you just wanna watch someone do it as a revision, I'm trying to do as many of these for you as I can. Another big change is the amount of content that is in there. There is a lot more content. With the old specification, we could reasonably expect that there would be one question on each topic. Um, some of them would be easy questions, some of them would be hard questions, but there's so much content anymore we can't really expect that. What we can expect is that the 
fundamentals of each subject, so like the fundamentals of chemistry, the fundamentals of physics and biology, are going to be scattered throughout the whole thing. So you can expect like atomic structure, balancing equations, units, not to come up as an individual question perhaps, but come up all over the place as smaller parts of bigger questions. We can also expect two topics that might be seemingly have nothing to do to with each other put together in one question so there's going to be a lot more kind of like thinking outside the box a lot more lateral thinking trying to mix this with that to try and work out what the exam is looking for and the biggest change the hardest change i think is the way that maths has um or the way that math is now examined in the um exams Previously, the exam board told us exactly what you were expected to know. So you were expected to know this, be able to do this, be able to do this, be able to do this. So things like percentage, momentum, and compounds, you were, we were told that you were supposed to know that. Now what they've done is they've given us a maths and science specification and a science specification. And you as students are expected to be able to take any part of the maths specification and apply it to any part of the science specification. So the like, finding percentage of element and compounds isn't on the specification anymore, but finding percentage is on the math specification, and then finding um, like the number of elements in a compound, that is on the science specification. So they can merge them together and ask you that, even though it's not explicitly said anymore. This is why we've started to see some really, really odd questions coming up in the specimen papers and papers that the exam board had provided. Stuff that us as teachers, would n we would never guess these questions. We would never guess that we're supposed to teach you like, spend loads and loads of time doing surface area ratio of things that come up. I'm not gonna say too much because it's one of the papers, but um, we, we don't have time to teach you every single part of maths and how it relates to every single part of science, just because there are so many different possibilities, so many different combinations that well, we would never finish, we would never get it all done. But this is one of the ways they're really, really going to pick out those grade 9 students, is by taking a bit of maths and applying it randomly to a bit of science and seeing what you come up with. So we're going to have to expect the unexpected with this one, and if you do see something that is like really, really mathsy, you haven't been taught it in class, don't worry, really nobody's been taught it in class because don't actually have the ability to read the minds of the examiners. We don't actually know what they're going to ask, exactly what they're looking for. So expect the unexpected, don't let these mathy questions throw you, um, just try your best with them really. Um, like I said, a bit of lateral thinking, trying to mix this with that, it's not going to be quite as obvious as it has been in the past. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of outside the box thinking involved, but our key facts are still going to be really, really important. Um, so I know I've been waffling on for a long time here. Um, I am doing as much as I can to help you. There's the, the revision guide. Where are we? The revision guide, which is massive and free for you to download over my website flashcards as well for you to download from my website um i've done a revision plan for you over my website you can just download that follow that each day like loads and loads of six mark questions loads and loads of practice papers in the new style of the exams um loads and loads of math questions thousands and thousands of questions um if there's anything you can think of that i haven't already done to help you out let me know and i'll uh, do my best